Hey, it's Luke. So you've decided to record some music, and from one day to the next, all of a sudden you're not just playing an instrument anymore. Between recording, editing, learning your DAW and your plugins, mixing, plus for a lot of people, mastering, you wear a lot of hats now, and there's so much to learn. You will make mistakes, we all do. Here are five of the biggest ones and how to fix them. Number one is too much bass. Especially if you're new to studio gear like headphones and monitors that have a more neutral sound and don't boost those low frequencies. Consumer equipment a lot of the time will boost the bass just so you can really feel it. But when you're using studio equipment, it tends to flatten out that line so you feel like something's missing. A late friend of mine tried one of my first tracks in his son's car when he got a new sound system. He wanted to see how it sounded with the subwoofers and everything. <laughs> and he tells me, that track has a lot of bass. You really notice it when you play it on a system that's made to boost those frequencies. So compare your tracks, starting with the bass, to reference tracks. Learn how your equipment sounds, the speakers, the monitors, and listen to commercial recordings just to figure out where that bass is on theirs compared to yours, just to make sure you're not boosting everything. And it'll just sound wonky once somebody tries to play it on a subwoofer. <laughs> Another thing that happens is this buildup of frequencies, again, mostly in the bass. When you're starting out, everything just sounds too busy and you have to work on separating stuff. You can do it by getting rid of the extra highs and lows that you don't hear that much, but they're just muddying up that mix. You can do that with EQs, filters, sidechain. Just learn all you can about mixing. You can use panning as well, so everything has its own space. Some things like the kick drum and the snare should stay centered, but there's a lot of stuff you can move around. And you can use reverb as well to bring stuff closer and further away in the mix. So the number two mistake is trying to hide something. You'll hear it a lot of the time with vocals where they'll be super reverbed and really low in the mix. People, when they start recording themselves are embarrassed at how their voice sounds or how they play guitar or the drums. Whatever it is, people try to hide stuff and it's not the solution because then your mix at the end just isn't balanced and it just doesn't sound right. The other extreme is having something too loud because they're super proud of it. Like the drummer will mix the record and the drums are really, really loud in the mix and everything else is really quiet. If you use reference tracks, they can help you set your levels and just have a more balanced mix. Number three is not letting space breathe. You'll have stuff all the time, like really busy melodies. It's tough to scale those back sometimes. And your bass line will be really, really busy. And then your drums will have all kinds of fills over this busyness. So just use negative space. If you've got the drop coming, take some frequencies out so it hits even harder when it comes back in. Have some tiny silence at the end of a bar. Whatever you can do to just give it a little bit of space and some breathing room. The fourth mistake a lot of new music producers make is not knowing when to stop. We have unlimited options with the DAWs and the plugins we have, so we tend to keep playing around with buttons and keep adjusting stuff, and at one point you need to think, it's good enough, it's done. What helps me, especially if I'm working on house music, is I try to remember that if I notice little things later, I can just release a remix. Find things like that that you can tell yourself, whatever helps to make you feel better. Just notice when it's time to be done with it, export it, and release it. Which brings me to number five, not releasing stuff. Now, whatever your reasons are for this, you're too scared or you doubt yourself, you have to release music if it's completely useless sitting on your hard drive. Okay, I need to start listening to my own advice because I still do this one. 